touched her and, and she couldn't even see and she sees now amen i mean i'm talking about she legally blind we used to go into prisons and joanne would uh, uh talk to the uh, the guys there or whatever you know and uh, and uh, betty and then would have to help her lead her out of the prison and god has touched her eyes and healed her eyes and that's a and i know she's got other testimonies she could testify about too so when we in these battles, remember the king is still on the throne and he's the one we trust and he's the one that it carries us through the, sometimes we get in some hard journeys, don't we? But praise God. You know, I love that little sight there where David threw that rock and hit that giant. It was like a, it was a, it was ordained of God. He killed that giant. Amen. That's awesome. That is awesome. Little David. I like that song. I to. See if I can remember the words on that when they come up with it. Uh, praise God. You know, uh, you know, some people uh, uh, get on fire for the Lord or whatever, and they'll start saying, well, I, I can't understand the Bible. You can understand it. A child can understand it. A child can understand it. And I don't want to hear those excuses. I hear them sometimes. You know, and they got these new Bibles and stuff out now, but I don't, I don't, particularly like them because they take deity out of the Bible. Did you know that? They take God, the word God and Jesus and, and things like that out, and you can't do that. When they reprinted some of them, I'm a King James advocate, but I do look at some of the, the, the newer versions a little bit to get a little bit of maybe what they said, but I'm deep in the word. I know what it means and what it says. Amen. But a young Christian needs to stick with God's holy word and, and, and just uh uh, stay in, but I want to talk a little bit tonight about uh, about uh, you know the Bible, hard or simple to understand. We're going to look at it and see it. God just made it so simple. His son died on the cross, and he was seen by over five hundred of the brethren when he he died on the cross, and when he was buried, and when he come out of the tomb, he was seen by over 500 of the brethren for about 40 days there. He was alive and was with uh, his disciples and around. And uh, he ascended up to heaven. He sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I. The gospel, one thing that a person has to do, they have to believe. Amen. That's our part. We got to believe it. I believe it. It's documented in God's Word, and, and you, you believe uh, George Washington was the President of the United States of America. It's in our history books, isn't it? I believe it. Amen. They seen him. He was there, and they wrote about it. Our Lord Jesus Christ did everything in this Word, what he said. Let's look right here and just see I, 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 these first uh, scriptures I want to get into just a little bit. A sower. You know, we all can be a sower, or we can be the one that harvests the seed sometimes, you know? I'll give you an example. Uh, one time I went to the Dominican Republic, boy, and the first time I went, the power of God moved. We baptized 70 in the river, opened the church up, a little grass hut and everything. We bought the church. All of the folks that was in the Dominican, uh, us uh, missionaries went together with a little bit of money, and we bought this grass hut so they could come and worship God in this little village. And we went across the river over there. And I preached there. I won't never forget it. You know, I was young and ministering. I didn't, I wouldn't in it real good. But Roy uh, sent the word down there and said, Rick, you spoke to minister here. And I went and asked uh, Billy Owens. I said, Billy, are you sure it's not you that spoke to minister? He said, no, it ain't me. I'm trying to get out of it, you know, because <laughs> I didn't, I didn't have that assurance and confidence that I needed. But praise God, I went ahead and done it. And 70 people got saved, and we took them right down to the river, which was right beside the village, and baptized them in the river. First time I ever baptized anybody. And me and Bill Posey, we was, and Roy and Jimmy Hughes and them standing up on the bank over there, Jenny. And they and uh, we were baptizing them. They were choking and hacking. They was about to drown. And, and we were baptizing them against the current coming down, Harry. And they said, turn them around. So we turned them around, and the current went the other way, and they didn't get choked as bad. But we baptized 70 in the river. The seed was sown. Amen. The seed was sown, man. We, we, we had a lot of people get saved on that trip. I'm telling you. The next time we went, the next year we went, and we went to that same valley down there, and... You know, many, there weren't many people getting getting saved, and I didn't understand it because I was a new Christian, baptized in the Holy Ghost, you know. What's going on, Lord? What's the matter? And we were coming up a fertile valley. I'll never
never forget it. We were coming up this fertile valley, and I looked down there in that fertile valley where the river was down there and everything, and there was this farmer down there, and he had an ox, a mule. No, he had an ox, and he was plowing the ground. And I was in the back of the bus. We had a bus we rented. I was in the back of the bus, and I looked down there, and I said, Lord, what's, what's the problem? What's, why ain't we winning a lot of souls? And uh, I looked down there, and he kept, he, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, look at the farmer, Rick. He, 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 he called me my name, Rick. He said, look at the farmer. I looked down there, and I said, Lord, I see the farmer. We still going up road easing up because it's a rough road. And I said, I see the farmer. He said, look at the farmer. And I looked at the farmer and said, Lord, I'm looking at the farmer. And Jeanette was sitting up at the front of the bus for Roy up there, and she hollered back there and said, Rick, the Lord said, look at the farmer. He's sowing seed. Is that God or what? That really happened. So the second trip we went on, we were sowing seed, and other missionaries was going to come to the island and things, and they were going to reap the seed that we sown because we reaped the seed that somebody else sown the first time uh, that I went over there. You see? So you and I, you don't know who you're talking to or what you got going on that uh, you might be sowing the seed instead of reaping the seed, but you planted the seed and when it rains, it waters it and it springs up. And look out, you can have things, fruit. Look at here. Bible hard or simple to understand. Let's read this, and I question the Lord about this one too. The sower soweth the word of God. The sower sows the word of God. Now look at this. And these are they uh, by the wayside where the word is sown, but when the they have heard Satan comes and immediately taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some more demonstration. I've been around a little bit now. <laughs> Let's go a little bit further out here in the word. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves. That stony ground, them roots can't grab a hold, can they? Now look right here. And uh, so endure but for a time after when afflictions and persecutions arise for the world's sake, immediately they are offended. Now we see the word is sown and, and things happen. And then we see it's, it's sown on stony ground. And things happen. Now let's look just a little bit further. And these are which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches and lust of other things enter in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Now you see, and I'll tell you right now, I'm a sower, I sow seed, I, I plant corn, stuff like that, and uh, uh, I like to see a tomato grow and stuff like that, you know. But sometimes you plant it and it don't do well. You plant it on stony ground or you plant it and ain't got no fertilizer or something ain't happening there and ain't, the soil ain't tilted just right. And uh, the seed don't take a hole and produce fruit. Let's go to this last one right here. And these are they which are sown on good ground and hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit and some uh, 30 foes, some 60, and some 100. Now let's, uh, I want to go back here just a little bit and look. I, I remember when I used to go into prisons a lot, and and I, and I was young, but I, I, I was younger. I had real nice dark hair, Harry. <laughs> but I'd go into prison down there and preach, and Brother Roy started building his church, him and Jeanette, and I got the prison minister and started going, with, and the group started going with us. A lot of folks here that's uh, in here tonight used to go to the prisons with us and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, we would sow the seed, and we would sow the seed, you know, and immediately Satan cometh and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. You think of that. Well, how can that happen? You know, because they didn't get a hold uh, of the word. The seed was sown, but the cares of the world come and stole the seed. Okay, now. 
You see that. The cares of the world come and stole the seed. We'll look a little bit further right there. And look. Or it fell on stony ground. It's not. It didn't establish and grow. Now, I'll say this. This is Sunday night, and we see folks in here tonight love the Lord. Why? Because the seed fell on good ground, didn't it? And it started to produce and praise God. And so you're growing spiritually, and you become a worker of God and start doing things for him because of so the seed fell on good ground. Now, look right here. And, and, uh, and they have no roots in themselves, so they endure for a time. And afterwards, uh, when afflictions or persecutions arise, and, and uh, words sake, immediately they are offended. Now, you see that happen too. You know, they come and they get saved, and all of a sudden they get back in the world, and they get back in their old lifestyle. It don't do them no good, does it? The devil come and steals the word from them they're just like they was. And you look at that. But I want to tell you this. Before I go to the next, this next scripture. When I was going into prison a lot, when I was first going in, I'd go to the prisons, you know, we'd go to all of them, South Carolina, state, federal, whatever. And uh, we would uh, go in there, you know, and I'd go to some prisons pretty regular every month or something, you know. The group the group would go, we'd sing and, and praise God and worship God and testify and everything, you know. And uh, I, I got to seeing some folks that got saved and on fire for God, Hallelujah. And uh, the next month I would come down there and those same ones that got saved and on fire for God come down there to get saved because they backslid. The word didn't fall on good ground, did it? And God showed me that. And I can remember when I was a young Christian, I used to do that. I'd live for the Lord six months and then I'd live for the devil and self for six months. And I'd have to come to that altar. But I'm telling you right now. So I got to question God. I said, God, why is these... These folks coming down here, ever the same ones. They come and they get on fire for God, and they go back out uh, into the, to, the the yard or whatever, and they come back next uh, month and they get saved again. This is what the Lord gave me. He said, sometimes the word falls on good ground and springs up and brings much fruit. Sometimes it falls on stony grounds, and when it falls on stony ground, it's not uh, bringing no fruit. It's going, and the devil comes and steals the word from them. They they back in the world. And uh, 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 sometimes the cares of the world get them. That's a big one out there for America today, isn't it? The cares of the world, the things, uh, uh, all of the uh, stuff, uh, materialistic things, uh, they go after that instead of after God. God don't mind you having some of them things, but he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Nothing wrong with that. I believe old King David, when he became king, he slayed that giant. He was the king. He had all the gold and silver. I believe he probably had a big old fat gold ring right there. And ain't nothing wrong with that. He paid the price, didn't he? And he followed God till he got deceived. But he paid a price for that, didn't he? But I'm here to tell you right now, the cares of the world will steal it. They get back in the world. They don't spend time with God in the holy word. And we're seeing more and more people slip away from the churches. Me and my brother was talking about some of that this evening. More and more people are slipping away. Where are they at tonight? This house should be full of people that's seeking the word of God and wants to hear the word of God and have, it, have that word get in there and give them strength uh, to go on and go forward. Amen. I'll tell you right now, if you don't put the word in you in a daily matter and pray in a daily matter, you're going to look out because the enemy is going to come and try to sift you. I'm telling you, you gotta, even preachers got to stay in it all the time. It's a battle uh, like I've never seen before out there. I'm telling you. So we got to stay in the Word. But the Bible says, look what it says right here. We see those that Satan stole the words. A lot of times they'll come and get saved and, and they'll get the monkey off of their back or whatever and they go right back out into the world and get right back into the same thing. You see what I'm saying? Look right here what it says though. And they are these which are sown among thorns such as hear the word and uh, the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things in entering in, choking the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Y'all see that? <coughs> Excuse me. And let's go a little bit further right here and look. I like this one, though. And uh, these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth uh, some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. They bring fruit, amen. 
that's the seed that the ground has been tilted up real good when I planted that corn. And that corn comes up, and when it comes up, praise God, it bears good fruit. Amen. Because it's been tilled, it's been fertilized, it's been taken care of there. And that's what happens uh, when the seed falls in good ground and good soil, and it comes up. Amen. That's like the night we praise in the Lord and worship the Lord in song and everything. That's tilting the ground. That's getting it ready to receive the Holy Word. Amen. And you know, praise God, I'm talking to the church in here tonight, but it's an awesome thing when you go to the prison. A lot of people get saved, set free, healed, and delivered. Demons cast out of them. Amen. When you go to the missionary field, people get healed, set free, and delivered. A lot of things happen. But when you become a, you an evangelist, I'm an evangelist. I was an evangelist. Now I'm trying to, God's got me to be a preacher, a pastor, okay? When you do that, you got to feed and feed and feed the flock. Because the flock's deeper in the word in some of the people that you see evangelizing. You know what I mean? And so you got to feed them too. Amen. We all got to be fed the word of God. And uh, you got to get deeper and dig deeper because uh, a lot of the folks coming to this church right here is deep in the Word. I give God, we got a we got a, a core of people in this church that's deep in the Word. Amen. And a lot of them have been missionaries and go into prisons and do the work and go on the streets and, and outreach and do all those things because they deep in the Word. And when you deep in the Word like that, God can use you. Amen. If you ain't deep in the Word, you can get tore up. Think about it. I remember one time I was going to preach down there in McCormick, and uh, God called me to do it, and I know it, and I knew he was always with me. I mean, he said he'll never forsake you, never leave you. And uh, I went down there, and it was, a, it was down there at McCormick, and uh, they had a big uh, uh, play cafeteria, and that's where they'd have the, the folks come in there and sing, and we had some guitar players in there and everything that helped us to make music and everything. We went in there, and I remember we went in there. The old devil, he'll try all kind of things, you know. I, I remember we went in there, and I was going to be the speaker, and we had a group with us and everything, you know. And I got cleared to go in there and everything. And, and this uh, big dude come up to me that was in the prison there, and he come up to me. He was trying me a little bit. He said, are you, are you the preacher? And I said, yeah. He said, are you ready? Are you ready to do this? He was trying to intimidate me a little bit, I guess. And I looked at him square and I said, I'm ready, man. Turn me loose, baby. And he, he fluttered out of there, you know, because the power of God was on me. And he come to do the work that God wanted. And there was men in there that come to receive the word of God. Amen. And uh, uh, But you, you get things like that. I remember one time I went down there to in McCormick when I was first going with Roy and the group. Uh, Roy and Jeanette uh, used to drive bands before we had a church. And we'd go to the prisons on the weekend and, I'll never forget, I'm just giving you some experience, you know. And so uh, we went down there to plant the seed, okay. And so Roy's going to be the speaker, you know. We had about 200 guys in that place that going to hear the word of God and everything. And, and uh, you know, me and Roy worked together. And we worked all week and everything, you know. And so this was on a Saturday night, and I went with them down there. You know, the group went down there, and we had singers and players and everything that sang. And they had some good pickers and stuff in there, too. And we just had a good time uh, praising the Lord. But... Uh, I went over there to Roy, and he was walking back and forth uh, down there in the, after he got checked in. He was walking back and forth, and I said, I said, uh, Roy, I said, brother, you got the word. You ready to go? And he said, no. I said, what? He said, no, I'm, I'm waiting on the Lord to give me what I want. I, you know, I hadn't experienced that yet. I was a young Christian. I hadn't experienced that yet. How, what in the world? He come all the way down here. Well, I'd have been studying all week and pounding and trying to get the, the word and everything, you know. But he said, no, I'm waiting on the Lord to give me what I want. And all of a sudden, it was time for him to step up there. He had the word. So God's an on-time God, ain't he, to plant to see. And so I got tested on that in, uh, in uh, London, England. Big church full of people. I was the one spoke to speak in London, England. I didn't have, I've been studying the word and reading and praying for, you know, a long time, but I was deep in the word then, deeper. And Roy said, You're supposed to preach. I tried to give it to two or three of the other preachers, and they wouldn't. They said, No, it ain't me. I know, we know it's you. And so it was me. And so I went up there and I was sitting in the front row and I had my old guitar from South Carolina, and they had a band from England, Wales, and uh, uh, England there and all of that. And, and man, I said, Lord, i got to get up there and sing in front of these people. And them people in there playing in that band, Harry, they knew how to pick them guitars, you know. And so, Lord, I'm sitting there, and Roy come by me. I'm sitting right there, and I'm telling you the place is full. And so Roy said, he walked right by me, 
He said, Rick, if you don't have the word, I'll do it. And I said, no, God brought me two or 3,000 miles over here, and I'm going to sit right here, and I'm going to do what God, he said he'd never forsake me. And it wasn't five minutes after that that I spoke, to, and I didn't have the word. Five minutes after that, I spoke to get up and pick my little guitar and sing a song and preach the word. Five minutes, the power of God hit me, gave me, a, and I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt what I spoke to minister, and I got up there and ministered and praised God, and the band helped me, made me sound a whole lot better. And uh, we praised God, but I'll tell you what, I preached the word of God, and this is an Assembly of God church in London, England. Uh, nothing I did, God did it. They were slain in the spirit, and they were laying on top of each other. It's how powerful it was. God did that. God did that. So when you sow the seed, can you imagine the seed that, that was sown there? And we went from there to other places to minister the word of God. But we sowed the seed in London, England, Wales, Scotland, all them places over there. And uh, you don't never, you got to stand with God though. Amen. And so when Roy told me, he said, I don't have the word yet. And God gave it to him. I was amazed. God tested me in in England and, and I stood and God gave me the word immediately so he's an on time God y'all and God's called you to do something or plant and sow the word and sow the seed or something like that if he's called you to do that he knows you can do that and he'll give you every tool that you need to do that amen and uh, God's going to call on the body of Christ in these last days I believe like never before and we're going to see things like never before I just know uh, God is an awesome God. and But anyway, it says right here, and these are which were sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 34, some 60, and some 100. I'm going to give you another one. I used to love to go into prison and did it for a long time. Me and, I met my wife in the prison. I was a guest speaker for her church. <laughs> and I went down there to the women's prison, and, and there she was down there uh, with the church. They let her out. <laughs> huh? Right. She was with the church. They let her out, okay? Anyway, I praise God. But anyway, I'll tell you this. Uh, God is an awesome God. I've seen him do so many awesome things uh, in the prison and stuff like that. I'll give you another example. we got folks that come right here to this church that we minister to in the prisons. And I'll tell you this. One time Roy and us was down there, I think I might have been with them, in Stevens. And it was when we, they were young and, and doing it. And we were down there and they were preaching the word of God and the power of God was falling in Stevens down there in a big way. And there was a dude out there named Charles Sellers. How many know Charles Sellers? Love him. He's a brother. And Charles, man, he was with the Dalton gang. He robbed banks and done all of that. There was a gang in Greenville that were called the Dalton. And Charles was one of them. And he'd been in trouble off and on a long time, and and uh, he had 25, 30 years for something. I don't know what it was, but he's out there, and he was listening to the word out there at the basketball courts. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, the power of God hit him. He ran in the chapel there, and Roy and Jeanette led him to the Lord. He got saved, and he got the fire and the power of God on him. The seed fell on good ground, and he would lay up at night, and uh, the, the light that was outside of his room would give him light, and he'd read the word. The power of God hit him, and God just moved in a mighty way and got him out of prison. And he started coming to this church for 20-something years, and he was a powerful man of God, and he used him. And Charles used to go back in the prisons. He'd go with us, or he'd go by us. He'd take a group, and I'd take a group sometimes. And he'd preach the Word of God down there, and he used to be in there. And God uh, did supernatural miracles, got him out of years that, you know, they'd let him go. And uh, But he would, man, he loved to see people get saved and healed and he would go down there and preach in the prisons, and he he would give his testimony. He said he'd been in every sweat box up up north and down and whatever you know he'd been in them. And uh, but uh, we love Charles, and he used to go to the Dominican Republic with us many times, and he loved the Dominican Republic. So that's just an example of a loved one. A power of God hit that brother, and 
he was from Greenville, and God got him out. And when he got out, he came to this church, and he became a, 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 a one of the uh, uh, the rocks of the church. He was a pillar, and he helped uh, any way he could and build this church and help he helped build a youth building over there. Would go to to the Dominican. He loved Dominican. He really wanted to move over there. He told me, but he loved it that much. But that's just an example of the of the seed falling on good ground and bringing up much fruit. Amen. God is an awesome God, and uh, He knows what He's doing. By the way, don't He? <laughs> Let's look. And uh, go a little bit further right here. And uh, I, I really like those scriptures right there. Let's look at uh, Hebrews 4.12. It talks about the Bible is what? For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even, dividing the sin of the soul, the spirit, and the joints, and the marrow, and is discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God knows our heart. And the word of God, hallelujah, is... Uh, the Bible is the Word of God. He, he speaks to us through His Holy Word. Amen? Think about it. Let's look right here. Let's, let's, let's look in some things that we have to believe, okay? you got to believe that the Bible is the Word of God. This Word is alive, y'all. It's alive. Now, now let's, let's, let's go a little bit further right here. I'm going to look in my notes and see if I've got some. What did God do in Genesis 1? God created, didn't he? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Who is the, who created? It ain't evolution. It's God Almighty who created the heavens and the earth. And we as uh, his creation must believe that he is. You think Adam believed that he was? He did because he heard him walking in the garden and he sinned. And he said, I, we're covered up. We're hid over here. Why are you covered up? Why are you hid over there? Have you been listening to somebody else? You ain't been doing what I said do? Just a little thought there. Look right here. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he him. He didn't create nothing in between male and female. This Genesis thing that they got going on out there. I don't see in my Bible where that God said he created male and female, bottom line. And so when you're born, that's who you are. The devil tries to deceive, kill, steal, and destroy. Look right here. you got to believe what God said. God created the angels, the spirit beings, and all of those things. Did you know that? Praise God. Look at here. Uh, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. We came out of the dust. And God Almighty breathed air. You and I have air tonight because God gave it to us. Be thankful. Try to do it without it. Try to live without air. I'll give you five minutes. Praise God. He give us a breath. We, we, we breathe. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. The breath is by God. And guess what else God did? Our creator. Look right here. A son named Jesus. Look at here. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Amen. Look right here. Emmanuel, God with us. The birth of Christ was supernatural. Did you know that? And uh, it says, without a human father, virgin born of the Holy Ghost, his blood only uh, for sin, his blood is the sinless one. He rose from the dead. He is alive forevermore. His blood was innocent blood. It wasn't of mankind. His was innocent. Amen. Amen. Think about it. And he is the only one. The Bible says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. The only one, the only way you can get saved is through Jesus Christ and believe that he is and he done what he done. Amen. And he's going to do what he's going to do. That's the only way. There ain't no other way to get saved and get the atonement with God Almighty except through his son. 
What happened right here after he come out of that grave in Acts 1, 3? And to whom also he showed himself alive after the passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Jesus showed himself after he come out of the tomb. He's alive and we see that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at here. In the book of Romans, this is the bottom line right here. Y'all might want to look at this. Ain't nobody in here arrived yet. He said, those who endure to the end. Look what it says. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. We was born in sin, wouldn't we? Think about that. Praise God. Look at here for John 3, 16. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see right there, you got to believe, amen? You got to believe. That's your faith. You got to believe that God created the heavens and earth and all of those things. That's your part that you got to do. And it's evident uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt in his holy word and go outside these doors, you can see God everywhere. Amen? Let's look right here. And it says, all who accept Christ and conform to God's plan will be saved. Now, we got to do something, ain't we? We got to obey his commandments. You got to conform to what he says. If you accept him, think about it. And uh, saved, resurrected from the dead to immortality forever. Now, those that's going to go by the grave, I'm going by, I'm going in the second load. The second load is those who are alive will be called up yonder, C-A-U-G-H-T. The first load is those who are dead and in the grave, they're going to be called up for we are. The graves are going to bust open. They're going to go meet the Lord, and that's fixing to happen in there. And we who are alive will be called up yonder. Amen. I'm ready to go on that second bus load, ain't you? <laughs> Look right here. It says right here, God so loved the world. We see his holy word. He has a plan, and uh, we're going to be resurrected from the dead if we go by the grave to immortality forever. That's a long time. That's beyond our, we can't imagine. Think about it. Most of us been on here on this earth a little while. It goes by quick, but eternity is forever. Think about it. Our God is the ancient one. Now let's look right here. This is what the Word says. Plain and simple. We know how to get saved. We just read it in the world. But the fearful, the unbelieving, you know these people out there that don't believe in God? They don't. They think they hunky dory, and the God, and the devil's got them deceived. They think they okay. Look at here. But the fearful and the unbelieving, and the abominable, the murderers, and the whoremongers, and saucers, and adulterers, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Bottom line, is a place called hell. And you know, sometimes I'll ask people, I've asked my family this, I'll get them in a gathering and I'll say, how many believe in hell? Raise your hand. Uh, how many believe in, know about Jesus? Raise your hand. Well, if you died today, where would you go, heaven and hell, heaven or hell? Ask your family some of these questions. Would you go to heaven or hell? Where would you go? And if they say heaven, well, why are you going to go there? Or they said hell, why are you going to go there? Tell me. And if they don't know whatever, I'll say, do you want to know the truth? If you want to know the truth, let me tell you. Would you accept the truth if what you believe is a lie? The devil is a liar, isn't he? Ask your family. I asked them, boy, I, I put them on the carpet. Me, me and Becky went up in the mountains with my family, and I love my family. I want to see all my family saved, don't y'all? And we and right before we left, I didn't do it before we left. We stayed up there in a cabin for about four or five days. It was beautiful. We had a wonderful family time. We really did. But we all got around the table drinking coffee and eating donuts or something. You know, we was fixing to check out the next day. And so I, I had my Bible and I threw my Bible down. I said, I want to ask you some questions. I asked every one of them point blank. Some of them said yes. Some of them said no. But I pray for the ones that said no, they're going to say yes one day. I love my family. Amen. I want to see them all saved. You do too. You love your family. You want to see your, your sons, your daughters, your children, your grandchildren. You want to see them saved, don't you? Amen. So you, as a child of the king, plant some seeds. 
Amen. Talk to them about the Lord when you get opportunity. Sometimes you talk to them, they'll run from you. You just got to wait till that opportune time. Amen. But most of the family know who you are and they know how, how you believe. They, they, mo most of them know. And I praise God for those that reverence that. Uh, in, you know. But I'll tell you right now, you see what it says right here. Uh, which burneth and their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I'll tell you right now, you either know Jesus or you don't. Do you stand for God or the devil? And I know I'm talking to the church in here. But I'm talking about the people on the Internet. I'm talking about the people outside these doors that maybe you can sow some seed. You can sow some seed and maybe one of us can come in a week or two or whatever and harvest that seed. Amen. Sow seeds. Try to sow. And if you don't sow, you might talk to somebody to the Lord and you might get to reap the seed somebody else has sowed. Amen. Think about it. We're all in this together. We're all in the body of Christ. So my challenge to everybody this week is invite somebody to the house of God in church. And if you see somebody that needs a good word or spoken word or tell them about God's word and tell them about Jesus, if you can. Amen. That's some of our accountability and responsibility with God when we stand before the throne. Amen. Think about it. So what do we talk about? You know, uh, the Bible, is it hard or simple to understand? Pretty simple, ain't it? For God so loved the world, that's about as simple as you get, that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. you got to believe. That's our faith. We believe. Amen. But those people that don't want to believe, and they some out there is really hard, and they don't want no part of it. They'll tell you that, too. Oh, yeah. And it hurts to run into somebody like that. But uh, one day, Dennis and uh, Kim was singing the special this morning. Dennis said a, a, a little statement when he first got up. He said, you know, ev the Word of God says, every knee shall bow. I won't be humble here, ready, don't you? Amen. I tell you right now, when a humble man comes before the Lord, though, you better look out. God will use him. He don't like no pride. He don't cut it. If you don't believe it, ask the devil. He had pride, lust of the eyes, and lust of the flesh, and he ain't going to be there. <laughs> That's the bottom line, ain't it? Amen. Let somebody bow our head, please. God bless you for being here uh, uh, tonight I pray it was good and I pray you got something out of this message and I pray you can carry on and plant some seed amen praise God every head bow I want to just give the blessings to the people in number 6 24 and 26 the Lord bless thee and keep thee the Lord make his face shine upon thee and he and be gracious unto thee the Lord lift up his countenance unto thee and give thee peace God bless every one of you. Thank you for being here. And uh, remember, Bible uh, uh, study Tuesday night, prayer meeting on Saturday night, and, and invite somebody to the house of God to hear the word and be sown. And I see some of you yawning and some of you ready to hit the refrigerators. <laughs> God bless all of you. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. Thank you for being here.